All right. So today we want to just make sure that you totally understand how to do these Lewis dot structures because this is kind of the basics of everything. Everything we're going to do is going to build around these Lewis dot structures. So make sure if you, there's anything that you're not sure about how to do, what to do, you know, then you need to make sure you ask and, and figure that out today. Okay. Those of you at home, email me. Okay. Let, we have to figure that out. Preferably not over the weekend, but <laughs> email me on Monday first thing. Um, okay, so if we look at number two, okay? Number two is HNO2. What's the first step? Uh, count count, 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 count electrons. electrons. One plus five plus six times two is 12 is equal to 18 electrons. Does everybody know where those numbers are coming from? Okay, it's group number, it's valence electrons, okay, it, and we're only we're dealing with what's up here, the A groups, the S and the P block on the periodic table. So it's one through 18, and it's one through eight valence electrons. All right, so we have 18 electrons. Now, what's my central atom gonna be? Nitrogen. Nitrogen, how do I know that? Because it's the hydrogen can't be Hydrogen can never be, it's way too small, it's the smallest one, it's always on the outside, and then this is the one you have the least of. Okay, so I'm going to say nitrogen, oxygen, oxygen. Now, this is just something that you learn, that hydrogen, if hydrogen and oxygen are in the same compound, the hydrogen is going to be attached to the oxygen, not to the central atom. Okay? Hydrogen and oxygen have a thing for one another. I said this yesterday, but the, you know, I consider hydrogen to be oxygen's hoe, okay? Just H-O, they go together. Um, and so if you can pick one, any one. I just put the hydrogen on that one. Thank you for laughing, I'm out here all day. <laughs> I missed that in the video. <laughs> so. You shouldn't say those things out loud when I yeah. hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, nitrogen oxygen. So now I have 18 electrons. Each line represents how many electrons? Two. Two. Two, four, six. Always do the peripheral first. Two, four, six, eight, ten. We're trying to get everything to get its eight filled out ten. Twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and then we go eighteen. Now we have an issue. What's the issue? Nitrogen doesn't, nitrogen doesn't have enough. Nitrogen doesn't have its field octet. It doesn't have eight, it only has six. So when the central atom is electron deficient, it doesn't have enough, we go Robin Hood. Steal from the rich, share with the poor. Now in this case, this has three lone pair. This only has two lone pair. So we're gonna steal from this one, not this one. Plus oxygen only forms two bonds. And so it already has its two bonds. So we're just going to form a double bond here. Now, if you have, it doesn't matter if you have it straight across from one another, if you have the double bond here, the OH up there, as long as you have a nitrogen, a double bond oxygen, a single bond oxygen, and a hydrogen, it doesn't matter where they're located around each other. Okay? So it can be straight across. It can be, you know, up top and bottom, up and down. It can be bent like this, bent like that, bent, you know, bent any way you want to bend it. Well, I drew one like diagonal. Okay. It's like I couldn't figure out which way to go. And that's totally fine. It, it, even, if, it, even if it looked like this, you know, with the nitrogen here, your double bond way over there, this OH here, okay? Because it's actually, that's the way the shape's going to be more like that. All right, so that's number two. Number three, SiO2. Okay, so silicon has how many valence electrons? Four. Four. Oxygen has? Six. Six times two is 12, so we have 16 electrons. Silicon's gonna be, and now on this, just try to be, you know, they're gonna wanna get as far apart from each other as possible. So just go opposite, like just two. Two, four. 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So now, 
silicon's deficient how many electrons? Four. Four, two pair. So what do we have to do? Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Okay, now, we don't want to take them both from the same one, so we're going to go here, and we're going to go here and make two double bonds. We good with that? Okay, we already did number four. Number five, this is what we, I don't know if you've ever heard people talk about a CFC, a chlorofluorocarbon. Okay, this is Freon 12 right here. This is what was the original air conditioner uh, material, substance. Okay, but you'll hear about CFCs in the environment. Uh, they're bad because the chlorine, this is a really stable molecule right here, but we used to be able to just, when you were you know, fixing your air conditioner in your car, you could just let the Freon just kind of go into the atmosphere and then you'd fix whatever needed to be fixed, then you'd recharge it with more fresh Freon. Well, it turned out they found that the Freon, would, this would make its way up into the upper atmosphere, and then the strong rays, the ultraviolet rays from the sun, they get stronger and stronger the higher up you go, would start breaking this apart, and you get what's called a free radical. You just get a single chlorine atom, or well, two of them actually per molecule. Those chlorine atoms would then react with the ozone in the upper atmosphere, and destroy the ozone. And so they talked in the 70s and 80s about an ozone hole forming over Antarctica. And then that was gonna allow more ultraviolet rays to come in because the ozone blocks the ultraviolet rays. And so the world was gonna come to an end, okay? Well, so they banned this CFC. And it turned out that one chlorine atom could destroy up to 20,000 ozone molecules before it got kind of used up in the reaction because it kept getting regenerated, regenerated. So. Uh, I don't know if the hole closed up as a result of that or if it just naturally did it, but the hole over the Antarctica has been getting smaller and smaller over the past 20 years. But wouldn't it be worse since the new stuff gives you so much more of it? Yeah, but it's more stable and it doesn't break apart. It's more environmentally friendly, but it doesn't work as well. Yeah, if you so, have to like replace it all the time. Yeah, the, yeah, they went with Freon, it was 410, 410A or something, but now they have even a new, new one that's even supposedly more environmentally friendly than that. But they're still all CFCs, they just have you know, bigger, longer carbon chains. Anyway, none of that is needed in order to be able to do this. I just, when I see this molecule, I just figure, hey, chemistry in action. This is what it's all about. This is why we take the class so we can learn about those kind of things, okay? So, C, Cl2, F2. Carbon has how many valence electrons? Four. four. Chlorine has seven. seven times two is 14. Fluorine has seven. seven times two is 14. So 32 electrons. We always like 32 because that means everything's going to work out nice and even because eight times four is 32. So you go carbon, chlorine. Now again, it doesn't matter if you put the chlorines opposite one another and the fluorines opposite one another. It doesn't matter what order these are in. You just have four of them around it. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and 32. And it's all good. And what do we call these non-bonding? What's another name for these non-bonding electrons? Non -bonding. Well, that's not, what's another name? I thought that was in the video the other day. Well, it was. What's another name for them, though? Lone pairs. Lone pairs. Unshared pairs and lone pairs versus bonding pairs and shared pairs. Okay, but long pair is how it's normally going to be called. All right, now number six, NF3, another easy one. NF3, we have five plus 21 makes 26 electrons. Nitrogen, fluorine, fluorine, fluorine. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. Extra electrons always go on the central atom. Extra electrons always go on the central atom. So let's look at number seven just together. Does anybody have any questions on any of those before I erase it? I'm just kind of going, y'all seem like you're getting this and that it's no big deal, so.
All right, so number seven says BR of three. So again, it's seven and set 21, so we have 28 electrons. Okay, so I'm not gonna, since everybody knows how to do that, I'm not gonna um, you know, focus on how to do that. Bromine's gonna be my central atom. Fluorine, fluorine, fluorine. And remember, you always build around the central atom. You don't wanna build in chains. Things build around the central atom. All right, so two, four, six. 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. That's 26. Okay, we have two more electrons. Now, we form double bonds if the central atom is electron deficient. This one now is electron rich. But the extra electrons always go on to the central atom in terms of pairs. You never put one in one. It's the electrons always hang out in pairs. So this, what do we call it then when you have more than eight electrons around the central atom? Expanded octet. An expanded octet. An expanded octet. Only elements on the third row and below on the periodic table can form expanded octets. Boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, they're too small to be able to form uh, an expanded octet. So this is what we call an exception to the octet rule. But anytime you're doing a Lewis structure and you got extra electrons, they always go on the central atom. You don't have to form double and triple bonds because you already have too many. You only form double and triple bonds when the central atom doesn't have enough. Okay? Now, one other exception that I need to show is, you know, I hate the fact that there's so many exceptions, but you know, that's the way the world is. But if I looked at aluminum chloride, AlCl3, when the central atom When the, oh, that's a lousy CL. when the central atom is a group 13, boron, aluminum, gallium, really that's the only three that would form covalent substances, boron, aluminum, gallium, mainly boron and aluminum, they form stable molecules with only six electrons around the central atom. Okay? Boron and aluminum form stable compounds. only six electrons around the central atom. The central atom being boron or aluminum. Okay, so when I'm doing this, I have three valence electrons plus 21, so I have 24 electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Ordinarily, we'd want to say, oh, this is electron deficient. I need to form a double bond. But this is an, another exception to the octet rule. It has less than 8, so that's 6. But this is the